welcome to Around the Realm. I have my good friend Larissa with me who plays Ruby. Hi, Larissa. So Hi, nice Zelda. to have you on. Yes, very happy. Very happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and to be heard by the world, which is a private joke that no one will understand until maybe another day. But we'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so um for our viewers since you know you are new to us here uh realms and role play so if you wouldn't mind just giving everybody a little intro about yourself sure so i'm larissa gallagher i'm a voice actor the joke being that i couldn't get my audio system to work for this uh zoom call and so thus the uh there was a slight delay but not for you because you wouldn't know unless i just came clean with that anywho uh, yes, I'm a voice actor. Uh, majority of the work that I've done is um, in uh, cartoons and or animation and uh, video games. Uh, I obviously have an accent and I'm not from this country. <laughs> so originally from Perth in Western Australia, uh, made my way over to the States and uh, been living in LA for the past 10 years, 11 years, I think coming up. And uh, yeah, and then I had the great fortune a few years ago of meeting Carmen and then got introduced to the wonderful world of temporary legend and realms and role play. <laughs> so how, uh, how specifically did you meet Carmen and get involved? So I really note to all people who want to get into networking and meeting people and voice acting, I kind of bullied my way into a <laughs> a dinner <laughs> he was having. Totally did. I was um I was at PAX East in Boston in 2020, just before pandemic. Um and uh I was uh rooming with Sissy Jones, and who was well known to the Temporary Legend crew, and Mylan Farrows, and Erin Busco, and Courtney Taylor. I'm sure all <laughs> these names ring a bell. Um, and yeah, we were we grabbed an Airbnb, and then Sissy with Sissy and Courtney were going out to dinner with Carmen because they were going to be doing a um, like a RPG at PAX. And it was the first night that we were there. And I just was like, I want to come and drink and eat and meet people and have fun. So I'm coming too. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. And then and then I met Carmen and and he was amazing. And uh yeah, and then so uh, obviously truncate a lot of things. I had met Mylan before at a previous pack. So I'd not met Aaron, but the nature of us all being in the Airbnb by the end of those three days at PAX, we all knew each other very well. Um, but yeah, we were, so we, I went to that dinner and then Carmen was running one of the games at PAX on one of the panels and he uh, kindly <laughs> asked me to join in, <laughs> join in for the panel. And I did that. And then kind of the rest is history. I obviously performed well enough to be invited back to play. Mm -hmm. So was very excited to get the call to, to come and join. <laughs> I have to say, it's the most Ruby way of getting into something. I, love I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very unlike me way of doing something, just to say, oh, I'm going to do uh, it. I'm just going to join in, yeah. <laughs> sometimes that's the best. Yeah, I, I will say I've learned that from from that moment and, and similar and other Ruby-like moments. Sometimes you just have to suck it up and step forward and wonderful things happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You never know. Mm -hmm. um, so you met, obviously met Mylan and Aaron before. So did you ever meet Ashley or Ryan? No, oh, no, okay. I did not. I um, I did not, had not heard their names or seen their faces until like the first uh, get together. I mean, oh, wow. I heard that they were going to be involved. And so I did my little Google searches. Um, so I, you know, I knew of them and knew who they were via that kind of realm of thinking, but in terms of speaking to them or having any sort of connection, no, not until this, um, until this game. So, yeah. Wow. Interesting. So there are, you know, new people, new friends, old friends, and playing a, playing cyberpunk, was that new for you? Was tabletop new for you? 
So tabletop wasn't brand new. I think mm -hmm. playing playing such a long campaign and kind of fully creating a character from scratch mm -hmm. and and like doing like starting and ending that was new to me. I yeah. kind of I'd done a couple of one shot or maybe I'd done one like one shot thing. I I had been work I'd, I'd been doing um some uh it wasn't really D D, but D D style but set actually in science fiction in space um so i'd done a, like a few weeks of playing with friends doing that but then just the nature of kind of that fizzled out so this was my first kind of big woe to go campaign working on something but i'd had enough experience and i mean really it's improv and and playing and uh and everything one was so great like first episode off the bat everyone was amazing and that just I think that just helps I, I think you know any game can always be fun but if you have like that right little you know secret source of people it can it can really just fly so that was really great exactly and I mean as we've seen from season one too so kudos to Carmen for just like knowing how to get the right people to form a group it's just it's amazing how it all works out I know, and I have actually. I was. I watched. Um, I watched season one, and it's it's kind of funny, uh, knowing Mylan and Aaron, <laughs> and um, but also like knowing now, like some of the stuff that happened in season two, that I would see the two of them like roll their eyes or kind of have a little laugh or something, and it would be like oh what's what's going on but then having now watched season one it was like yes. oh that's yes good you get the inside jokes <laughs> exactly which is hilarious but we didn't like we we didn't know and nor did they kind of tell us now but like a lot of that you know thrice down and oh, Kadari, really? like i was all about of... to say did you not know about thrice down no no oh. they were all giggling and so i knew there was something but no had no had no idea oh, and wow. we did kind of we did debrief a little we did kind of talk in between stuff but I think we all I mean unless I unless my memory is completely shot I, I kind of have this sense that we we wanted to keep what was happening on game day as game day and we didn't yeah. so you know or at least from my point of view I didn't you know pre-plan or get together with people or even discuss the show beyond when we sat down like on Sunday morning and recorded mm-hmm mm -hmm. So um, just kind of shifting to uh, a little bit about Ruby now. I mean, you know, like I first had the experience. Like, I didn't meet you. I met Ruby first. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. Because you saw yeah. all this stuff. I did wow. not meet you at all yet. So, you know, like I see I would, it was so cool just to see, you know, like Ruby coming in like the first thing I think she's just like yelling at zigzag to shut up or something. And then, you know, and then I'm like, oh, my God, I'm meeting Larissa today because I remember we met at something Courtney was doing. That's right. Yeah. yeah and yeah, then you're just like yeah. so nice. You're like, oh my gosh, hi. I'm like, oh wow, you're not like your character good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you even told me that at the time. So I wouldn't no. have even known. No, that that was, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I said anything to me. <laughs> So what was the process like coming up for Ruby, you know, like just like building somebody that's so very much not, you know, not like you in a sense? No. Uh so that I mean part of it was the just the, the nature of the gameplay and choosing the characters in the cyberpunk world was um or or as part of the uh the red what's it called the red that the game is the cyberpunk the red rule the book, jump cyberpunk start. red jump start thank you <laughs> part of the jump start kick was it kind of you know uh, talks you through how to create characters and you had to choose what class of character you wanted to play and then you know a lot of it was roll the dice and if you get I mean not just your stats but even kind of relationships or, or ca character content creation a lot of it was kind of in in the roll of the dice as well but then from those kind of key points you had to go back and create stuff and I think a little bit of who I rolled and then a little bit of me just going, what do I want to do with this? And because it was pandemic and because it was 
like, and I don't know if anyone said this, but it was, it was kind of that first wave had happened and it was all locked down and then summer had mm-hmm. happened and everyone was like, woohoo, this is great. And then Thanksgiving happened and we all shut down again because it all had like that massive spike. So I think it was kind of this like a little bit of PTSD coming up. I mean, you know, in perspective, uh, you know, coming up and that was just like, I just want to be as different as possible. Mm-hmm. And for me, that was, I need to get out of my head because I like to pre-plan and think and do everything. And so fortunately, I just rolled this like crackerjack of a lady and her whole like reason to be was, was create chaos and have fun. So then that kind of became my purpose. Every episode was in, in in as much as I could do without destroying the flow, flow of the game or without destroying the relationships because you still, I mean, I think Ruby in any other situation just would have walked, but that's not the point of the game. You have to be there. So how do you maintain? But, yeah, but that was like the the minute, you know, come and um, put me in the car and then, you know, pulling the gun out, that was just my, okay, I just have to straight away every step of the way create chaos, but also do something that she would get some weird kind of, for lack of a better word, kind of kinky enjoyment just out of destroying stuff because she'd been so broken in her past that that was the only way that she could kind of claim uh, what, like, claim control over everything definitely Ooh, yeah i like that i kind of want a ruby i kind of want a ruby uh mini series now carmen ah <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, well am i gonna say no carmen <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah come on carmen. <laughs> no, who who would want that i mean who could possibly no but it was really fun and i think that's the other thing like with anything kind of like like aaron and i knew each other as well as you can when mm-hmm. you spend three days with someone and then don't see them again. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, she's such such a beautiful human being. And then I think I said something in game and she just, like, spat back at me and I was like, oh, right, you're right. <laughs> so, like, I think we just started sparring. That wasn't planned. That wasn't organised. Yes. Um, the Sid relay, I'm just trying to kind of think relationships with people. So, that yeah, so the, the, the zigzag, Ruby thing like we did have the establishment that I was her manager Mm -hmm. but how that relationship worked and whether we liked each other or not only happened because Erin said what I can't even remember whatever she said and Mm -hmm. I was like all right um you know (laughs) I'm gonna play this out um but and then the Sid one as well I think we both knew the lived in the same place I can't remember whether we I don't think we planned it I think we just in the moment decided it was easier to know each other and have that kind of back history and was kind of fun as well. And Mylan's so awesome. Um, So having kind of heard a playoff and then, yeah. And then Ashley, just hysterical. I've never, I don't think I've ever met. (laughs) Raven and just like that, that like dry biting wit that where she just, and she's, because she's chaotic as well, but like in a whole completely opposite way <laughs> to Ruby. <laughs> so that was great. And then Ryan being this like, you know, just kind of quiet and seemingly, and then like fire up the big nuts. And so, yeah. yeah pulling just, out a cigarette, having and, some shrimp. Yep. <laughs> having some shrimp, having the steel in my coffee, like do it. Oh, and the shrimp. The shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like, what, are we, what episode are we at? Episode we are at eight? eight. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. Just, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's see. You're just, just going to keep watching. The so. shrimp. The shrimp. I know. that. Yeah. The shrimp has been established yeah. quite frequently here. I Yes. <laughs> Ruby was not impressed with the amount of food that was constantly being eaten. <laughs> <laughs> or people just rather than actually getting forward and protecting people just oh, yeah. to eat food instead. Was... Oh, yeah. Sid and Gizmo's main goal, I think, was the food. I don't even think they, you know. Nothing to do with any anything else, you know. Just no, yeah, it was great. It was great. So 
<laughs> I also love how uh, seeing Aaron play zigzag because I first, you know, saw, I mean, I know Aaron now, and then I saw Aaron play win. I'm like, okay, they're pretty similar, but seeing Aaron play like such a spitfire character, especially when you two are battling, like you two, when you two battle for Kodara, it was right. so funny and so fun to see Aaron play something that's like a little bit out of herself. And it's just, it was, I loved I love the zigzag arc. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so it's so great. And then and like now rewatching it, kind of remember because you just forget oh, so yeah. much. Because when you're playing as well, you've got the whole like what's happening, who's that person, who's that NPC? Have I met mm-hmm. them before? Am I I know that because I'm listening in game, but does my character know that? And yes. then meanwhile, you know, yeah, and then other people are doing side journeys and then you come back in. So like now to be able to rewatch it and kind of see things like Ryan's uh, Ryan, I just get, like Ryan's <laughs> face, just watching his face when he does his little like he's like and then he's got like these little under the cuff chuckles and it's just so beautiful because you don't yeah, I'm not really taking notice when we're playing because I'm so concerned of Yeah don't forget and and you know make make this be as good as it can be so it's it's yeah it's really lovely to kind of see what everyone's created even though you I was in the journey with it as well definitely yeah um is there a character besides your own that you see yourself in and why that I see myself in Mm. my my me Larissa yeah probably probably Sid Oh, if really? anything mm-hmm. yeah maybe maybe I mean I think probably a little bit of everything a little bit of the protectiveness that um that uh Gizmo has uh like a little bit of the right like stand-up righteousness of mm-hmm. zigzag I mean probably the one that I'm least like <laughs> <laughs> it's Raven, but like Raven, <laughs> Raven, but to be honest, like Raven is the kind of the person that I secretly aspire to be. I kind of want to have that little sit in the corner, acerbic wit, just like drop a one liner, <laughs> but just otherwise kind of be unnoticed. So that's probably how. And and Ruby, like, I don't think I'm a lot like her, but I think a lot of my, I think a lot of my inner monologue mm. is Ruby. Like a lot of what I censor in my everyday <laughs> life people who know me probably shouldn't say that um but yes yeah, so a lot of like a lot of stuff or like you know reading people on Twitter and like the conversations that I have in my head a lot of it is maybe the kind of stuff that Ruby would say out loud and act on but mm-hmm. I am I am an ad- advanced you know emotionally emotionally regulated person and so I I know to hold that back and that that's not healthy behavior but uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so what advice would you give to somebody wanting to make their own tabletop character uh well uh, I would say <laughs> um I would say uh two things one is like choose choose the goal I mean it sounds so dumb but choose the goal of what you want to get out of the game like it it, like for me I I really wanted to do something different because I knew that I would hold myself accountable like the more different it was I would be able to see when I wasn't making it would be so much more obvious when I wasn't making choices that were rupee but that would be more like what Larissa would do to you know, oh, we've got to save everyone. Oh, we've got to make sure everyone's being heard and being um, being represented in in the game. But Ruby doesn't care about that. So, so I wanted that to hold myself accountable. But then, if you know, if 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 you just want to kind of go out and smash stuff, like I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Ruby did that anyway. But yeah, I, I suppose it's kind of what whatever you feel most comfortable with and and maybe who you're playing with as well whether you feel I think maybe because I knew and again not super well like I don't I don't I mean I think everyone that I had met knew that that Ruby was not me but still yeah um it was just kind of like I think it'd just be fun to be something different than I usually play the moms or the you know so yeah Definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. I always like to go um, 
I always like to go Gundam for like the chaotic characters or something that I would yeah. find, think that I'd be like the complete opposite of. Well, and I think you find your strength when you do something that's out because also if you if you if you're in the RPG, you're in a safe space because you're obviously playing with people who are your friends. Mm-hmm. So we're better than to branch out and and be something different than with a group of people that know you and love you is kind of I suppose where I'd go with that exactly. but, uh, but you know you do you boo I say <laughs> um so where do you think Ruby would be if she weren't with this like group per se where do you think like where do you, what do you think she'd be up to I think she would I I just think Ruby would just be one of those people who just partied every night until she broke. Like, honestly, I really do. I think she cares about my, I think the only thing, I think the only thing that's holding her back is that need and desire for money. And because the money fuels the lifestyle to make her forget Mm. about the life kind of thing and Mm. she's not so independently wealthy that she can stop working thus being the zigzag manager um and you know and she and she tried the the the, you know the straight and narrow path but again it's also it's cyberpunk so you know if you don't have money in this world it's pretty pretty crap world to live in so so Mm -hmm. I think she recognizes that I I, but I do I just think she's one of those people who just would be to know her in real life she would be awful awful (laughs) to try and be friends with her she just wouldn't ever make connections to people I think this is kind of the the situations that everyone got in was probably yeah the, the saved her life in the long run i think she would have been like whatever dead at 45 or something i don't know yeah, yeah. sorry for the down <laughs> but she would have had fun doing it she would have had a fun time here for a oh good time God. not a long time mm-hmm. yeah 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 crash and burn in as glorious a way as possible uh so our final question would you yeah. rather live in the land of yashan or night city and why I well, I think I might have answered that. Depends depends how much money. <laughs> <laughs> depends how much if money. I, I mean, really, if I had a ton of money, I probably Night City because I think you can kind of I think you can yeah. kind of cruise in Night City if you've got mm-hmm. money. If I didn't have money, oh, Land of Yashan in a heartbeat because <laughs> at least I mean because everything's got crazy and everything's got people out to kill. I mean, all of the kind of the essence is the same, but I think in Yashan, you could you could live nicely whether you had money or not, or whether you had friends or yeah. not, or you know, it just it seems by nature a more peaceful, quieter land. Um, cyberpunk, not so much. Now, could Ruby ever live in Yashan? <laughs> I, I wouldn't think so either, but <laughs> no, unless she had magic, and then mm. she'd probably turn herself into some incredible demon controlling the world. Who knows? But yes, yes, <laughs> I think I'd go money, cyberpunk, no, or Night City, or no money, Yashan. Yeah, it's such a it's such a catch twenty two, and you're right because I feel like if I had money, because indoor plumbing is great, love that. Oh, if there's not a flush toilet, I don't want to. Well, I don't think they would. I don't know. I don't know. I was actually talking about that with Erin. Think about that. And she was like, We never went on pee breaks, I don't think. So maybe we don't have to go to the bathroom in Yashan. She's like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. So um, that's right. And I mean, yeah, they didn't, did they? I don't think they did. Um, No. In Yashan, Yes, you can. I mean, like, it depends because you can get attacked by dragons and stuff. And like, Night City is more of the real world. And like, Yashan, like, if I can find like a peaceful village that's like never been attacked, yeah, go there in a heart, 
feet, I suppose. But Night City, I would have to be rich in order to want Night City. Because I was also talking to Mylan about, like, Sid, you know, like, Sid and Gizmo, how they, like, the food is it. She was like, yeah, yeah well, when you, you know, when you're poor like them, the food sucks. And then, you know, so I'm like, all right, well, I don't know if I want to live in Night City unless I can afford good food, so... Well, that's right. And then also like good weapons and stuff like that, because mm. people are constantly out to, or, you know, I mean, what you're either probably working on the streets or your gun for hire or your, I mean, just the class system is obviously <laughs> like that. I don't think middle class exists. I think you're either, you know, one or the other. Um and, yeah, I mean, just even having access to weapons and things like that. I will say on a bit of a side note because I watched one of the recent episodes and it just struck me because we were in we were in Mar Benito's mansion and and Carmen was like, so, you know, do you want to, you know, do investigation and see what weapons are around and whatever? And then, and I didn't even remember that this happened in game, but then it was like, oh, you know what? Don't worry. What, what do you want? What weapons do you want? And it was just a little bit of a like, yeah, yeah, you can have anything you want. And it didn't occur to me until I was watching. It was like, that should have been super suspicious. Yeah. When <laughs> the DM is saying, don't worry about rolling dice. Just you have all the weapons at your disposal. What do you want to take? It was like, yeah. oh. We're all about to die real soon. <laughs> now, whether you've watched that episode or not, you'll have to wait to find out. But it was that kind of like, oh, yeah, because if you don't have weapons mm -hmm. and these people are coming after you, and I mean like hardcore, like military-grade weapons, you're not, you're not surviving in Night City anyway. No. And you're not getting... Carmen's an evil DM, so when he oh. gives you, like, when he gives you something, you have to be suspicious. Like, why? Something yeah. four times worse is... In the future, I have a feeling. Yeah, yeah. When he get, oh yeah, and I think you were even saying that in one of your things. When Carmen gifts you something, <laughs> you have to like... be suspicious. <laughs> yes. Why? Why did you let me get away with that? I don't think that's gonna mm -hmm. turn out well for me later. But anyway. Oh yeah, but... and it definitely. I mean, this episode. Uh, just getting to the recap. This episode has Please. a a lot of. Uh, this episode was a lot. So we last left off with um, everyone going to meet Bit at the uh, Abandoned Biscuit Factory because I don't know what it is oh, with people. And, again, the food theme. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Ruby sends Juno to find anything on the relation between Juno and Finnick. And, you know, we did leave off with Juno sleeping with uh, Calypso. So, ooh, tension. <laughs> It didn't happen. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Ma lets Zigzag do all the talking because she wants her to take over the family business. So she's like, you know what? Let just just let's go. Let's you know you do all the talking. But Zigzag was being like, mm, I don't want to do it. And then Raven was saying, Why don't I do it? Because I used to be part of the Nova Crime family. So Ma plays this reverse psychology of like, you know what, Zigzag, you couldn't do it anyways. So. Why doesn't Raven do it? And then Zigzag gives a, you know, like a whole fit about like, no, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So Ma lets Zigzag do it and gives a convincing pitch about how they should team up and take down the High Riders. And Bit wants to meet in another location with no weapons. So everyone drops all their weapons besides Ruby, who tries to conceal two knives. And I she mean, tries... <laughs> Oh, it's such a Ruby move. And just, just <laughs> she tried to deny it till the very end when they literally took the weapons and like, here you go. I was like, I don't know. I didn't I didn't realize that I had them. Like, that's me. <laughs> Zigzag plays the recording to bit where the High Riders want to take over Night City. And the Novas have a treaty with the High Riders, so they're like, uh, I don't want to stand up against them because they technically haven't attacked us, so. And Zigzag and Ma try to negotiate, saying that Finnick is a traitor and eventually they're going to betray them because he betrayed Sid. So Raven convinces Bit to unite the gangs, but he wants to do it under his and Raven's rule because Bit's going to crush. And here we go. Remember when I mentioned Carmen, Carmen being like an evil DM? Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, Bug shoots Bit in the head. And this is where things really start to turn, and it just gets so good. Sid is going to be net running to see where the captured Benitos are since they need to get a hold of them and escape real quick. Thank you, Bug. <laughs> Zigzag hands Gizmo the hollow disc, and they want to edit the part out about the Benito family and leave in the parts about taking over Night City. This was so, so smart. And they all plan on 
pinning all of this on the high riders since everybody that saw bit dies just is dead so gizmo is able to edit the hollow disc and make it seem like the original disc was an attack on the novas yeah wasn't that so good and ruby Ruby has the radio implant and says that the high riders are attacking while raven is yelling saying that they're under attack and sid is working with disabling the cameras when the guards arrive they're totally fooled and they believe that the high riders have definitely killed bit so they run off to get mo which is the benino doctor to see if he can save bit but he's like he's dead he's dead He's been dead for like 20 minutes. Yeah, not going to happen. But they've uh, completely fooled the Novas into thinking the High Riders killed Bit, really pulled it off. So Gizmo goes through Bit's phone to try and find the true leader of the Novas, who they were trying to get out of Bit before he died. But uh, they trace an encrypted number to a location, which is a manor on the outskirts of town. And Sid talks to Mo about the possibility of her of her getting her head fixed. And she's got a lot to think about because I don't know if I get my head fixed by Mo, but I don't know how much time she has left to get all the stuff with Kodara. So yeah, Sid has a lot to think about. And our group just pulled this off. So this was a very high tension spot to leave off, but you know, you gotta keep watching to figure out what's gonna happen next. And then Nova's gonna figure it out. So much more, so, so much just, more is gonna it's... happen too. <laughs> it's crazy uh-huh. like yeah to think that i'm kind of thinking yeah anyway whatever <laughs> even yeah new old characters new characters so many great things oh, afoot so but, many uh, great things afoot but you know you got to keep watching so be sure to tune into next week's episode and larissa thank you so much for coming on here thank you thank you for having me hope you're all watching and enjoying it yes. we'll see you soon thank you for tuning in everybody bye